Okay, greetings everyone, this is First Antonian 753 with the next episode of Geopolitical Simulator 4 Power and Revolution. Restoring the Ottoman Empire. Um, it's been a while, I think it's been like two, three weeks since I've actually recorded an episode. I know I've been uh, publishing episodes, but I did a whole bunch right on uh, around Christmas and I haven't really had time to record any other episodes since, so been a while uh, for me um, and since then I've seen I've been looking at the uh, 2019 add-on for the geopolitical simulator game this is probably gonna be more of a review of that in uh, this episode than uh, actual restoring the Ottoman Empire I'll give you guys a little bit of an update here because I'm not sure if I did an update on the end of the last video but we've got one point two trillion dollar economy which has grown significantly uh, our growth rate is 9.88 that is tremendous and inflation of course with a high growth rate you're going to get some inflation so we're at 5.15 I may want to increase interest rates actually I'm still waiting for the new interest rates alright so I can't so I can't really do anything there with interest rates. I'll have to wait. Um, the budget, real quick, $310 billion budget on $250 billion expenses. $310 billion income versus on a uh, $250, $250 billion budget. Um, that giving us an excess of $60 billion. And our public debt is only $111 billion, so... That looks like this is going to get paid off in about two years. Um, might be adding a little bit, of course, but that is pretty good economic numbers. However, the big issue has been the fact that I haven't been able to convince the UN Security Council to make a move on Cyprus, or allow me to make a move. Well, no, I'm trying to get the Security Council to give me a permanent seat, so then I can make the move on Cyprus. Uh, I don't have any dirt on Cyprus. I have dirt on other countries, and I do think some people are sort of anxious for me to take some action in this game. Theoretically, you could uh, quickly take over a country, and Cyprus is one with the capital right on the border here. That's one where I could probably move in enough forces quickly enough to take the capital before Although that is always very risky to do that, and it could end up bringing an entire world of pain against me by going without a UN resolution. Uh, especially if we have, uh, who do we have here? We have uh, England uh, has some bases here. So that could possibly bring the entire world against me. Although, United States, England, they are in NATO with me, and I've got countries, I've got bases in my country, so maybe that'll keep them on the sidelines? I don't know. I don't know what will happen. Just to take a look at the diplomacy. Um, Azerbaijan, Spain, Belgium, Qatar, Netherlands, Poland, Hungary, France, Libya, Uzbekistan. Those are our main allied countries. So ideally they should come to our aid. Although I've never really gone to war, done a war of aggression without a uh, security council resolution on my side. So, uh, well, I think I did one time. There's a Russian series that I have where I took Georgia before the UN could make their move, but, or before Georgia could make their move in the UN, but that was on an older version, so I don't know if it's quicker now. Um, but, unfortunately, I'm probably going to save that for the next episode because this episode I did want to do more of a 2018 review. Uh, for you guys, the 2018 mod, or add-on, edition, uh, for new content, which I guess, I don't have a price here, I am not seeing a price, it's usually like 20 bucks, I think, yeah, I don't have a price, I'll see if I can try to get a price for you next time but there are some interesting uh, interesting additions uh, to the 2019 edition so just to review them first and I don't know if I'm clicking off here if you guys are losing that um, 
But there are three big changes. Simulations to major global threats. Global warming. And there is a 2030 chaos edition. Uh, so the simulations for major global threats. Uh, it says geopolitical simulator 19 edition. Simulates all major perils that threaten the planet and produces a comprehensive assessment for each one that results along with specific graphics. So I think they're going to add new graphics. I think we're going to be adding new things to the comparison screen here. And there's going to be some new features. So it's going to include things like... Uh, and and I'm, I'm assuming what they're saying is that these... When these things happen in the world as a whole, they're going to have side effects. So it's almost like there are global problems and you can try to work to solve these problems is what I'm taking from this. And these issues are pretty interesting. You've got global warming, that's obvious. Uh, obviously going to be one there. You've got social inequality as an issue. You've got risk of global atomic war. So that kind of reminds me of the whole uh, doomsday clock scenario. Uh, overpopulation, unemployment, atmospheric solution, uh, pollution, terrorism, cybercrime, regional conflicts, food insecurity, world hunger, deforestation, natural disasters like storms, floods, drought, and extreme heat, rising sea level, Ocean acidity, disappearance of animal species. What the heck was that? Get out of my face there. Okay. Uh, disappearance of animal species, endangered animals. Uh, climate refugees, epidemics, endocrine, endocrine disrupting chemicals. I don't know what they are. Endocrine? I'm not sure what that is. Um... So those are like major, and it looks like there may be more. So it seems like these are major global threat simulations, and this could all bring this could bring a whole new dynamic to um, geopolitical simulator four, which I think is pretty cool because in this scenario you could actually have instead of just trying to conquer all that stuff, which conquering is kind of difficult in this game, but you know, um, you're really just managing your country. You're not managing things internationally. This helps. This could kind of create a global cooperation dynamic to the game where you work with other countries to actually solve certain problems globally which i think would be pretty cool uh global warming it says one specific scenario global warming is based on the goals of the ipcc which is the intergovernmental panel on climate change oh my god what is going on with this I keep getting this color scheme thing that pops up. That's weird. Um, so the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has the objective of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius for 2100 and reducing CO2, CO2 emissions by 45% by the year 2030. As head of the 30 largest CO2 emitters, uh, initiate a global energetic transition to pursuing policies on infrastructure, dismantling thermal power industries, constructing power plants with renewable energy. Uh, there are finance actions that can be taken, like taxes on petroleum products and a carbon tax that's going to be added. Uh, there's things on dealing with the environment and innovations, CO2 capture, development of electric vehicles. Uh, all while avoiding energy shortages and maintaining balanced budget as well as social stability. So, that is that was a mouthful there. Uh, there seems to be a lot going on with that. I don't think we had work production. Yeah, so there isn't any environment. That's interesting. Let's see what we have here. CO2 rejects. CO2 rejects. What is that? You guys seen this? Change colors, color scheme. I just clicked the color. Oh, no. I might have just... Okay. Better. I'm thinking it's working. Let me just check real quick. Yeah, I think everything seems to be fine here. Okay. Okay. I need a, a more powerful computer, I think. Alright, so... 
In addition to that, there's also a third major change. It's called Chaos 2030. This is another simulation, it looks like, uh, which is a free mode, futuristic, dystopic game. Uh, nations have turned inward and have opted for more radical governments. What? Uh, some of whom have gained access to nuclear weapons. All right, so the inward turn, I definitely see that trend going on in the world today, right? We see that with uh, the whole populist movement around the world, uh, possible, we got the Brexit, we've got possible, uh, you know, uh, collapse of the European Union and everything, and Putin and Trump and even Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping and China might be trying to integrate the world a little bit more, but, you know, a lot of countries are moving inward. Um, so that's definitely interesting. Uh, so, but, but radical governments, I don't know what that means. Does that mean communist radical or is this, are they changing things really quickly? But there's definitely a populist movement, so. Um, so relations between these states are strained. Um, sources of conflict and key international organizations have been dissolved. So there goes... The EU, there goes the UN, maybe NATO's gone too. Uh, fight against global warming has failed. Temperature curves are showing a rise of 7 degrees in 2100. Uh, and serious consequences have been felt with unprecedented economic crises and the growth of social inequality. People are on edge. Uh, political upheaval are increasing, terrorist organizations are growing on this fertile ground of instability. So basically it's the fear that the entire, you know, left wing has in the world that uh, the world's going to just fall apart and move inward and we're going to go into a period of nationalism and everything that was done to get countries to work together uh, post-World War II, post-Cold War, the whole international order collapses and it's a bad thing. Uh, the right wing, right wingers around the world, I would assume, are okay with that, uh, and probably think that uh, it would be a good thing for the whole international system to break down and sort of reorganize itself. Uh, but the chaos scenario 2030, that is basically portraying the fears of the left wingers, I think, uh, and the globalists and the internationalists and um, you know the people that think that. What we've been doing for the past 25 years is a good thing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add on top of this, we're going to take a look at some spe more specific features here for the game. And if I can pull this, there it is. Okay. I have some problems with my screens right now but uh so so new sp more specific features uh new legislations and other features that will be included in the 2019 add-on um we've got the implementation of a digital tax on online giants that sounds like something that um the eu is certainly is currently trying to do with france they're trying to tax i think uh online companies it's called article 13 i think i posted uh on my Twitter, if anyone's actually on my Twitter, there's a link in uh, the description below to my Twitter, and I think there's a link where you can sign a petition to be opposed to that, because it would end up charging us on the internet, and people have YouTube channels and everything, you're going to have to, it's going to have a negative impact on you, I don't have, I'm not uh, well versed in everything at this moment, but from what I've skimmed in articles and seen on videos, it's a bad thing for YouTubers. And for people who want free access to the internet. Alright, that's kind of like... I don't know if it's related to... Um, what the uh, United States did last year. Well, we're not taxing it. The United States said that companies could start charging for it. And that is the whole... Um, drawing a blank here. The whole uh, free internet access thing. I forgot what I'm talking about. What is... Alright, I'm going to move on. Maybe it'll come back to me. <laughs> but you guys, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, fighting for women's rights. Alright, another new legislation and features. Fighting for women's rights with sufficient and comprehensive budget. 
this would include budget items for combating sexual violence, um, educational policy on gender equality, and then specific laws dealing with harassment on the street, the abolition of male-dominated mentoring, and fighting female circumcision. All right. So these are all some of the policies. I, I assume that's sort of influenced by the Me Too movement. That's probably uh, what they're trying to to simulate there. So you can do like a Me Too series if you want. Uh, fight for women's rights around the world. You know, that would be interesting because you'd have to take on countries like in the Middle East, um, Iran, Saudi Arabia, all those countries. That would be interesting. Conflicts in Muslim nations. Could be some interesting series and scenarios there for the social justice warriors out there. Um, legislation on motorway tolls. I don't know what that means. Motorway, I guess you just toll money, right? I'm assuming. Uh, you can play up to 30 nations simultaneously in the same game. Oh my god, I've never played a multi-national game. I mean, I've had, I've looked at it before, and you gotta like jump around and keep track of everything. I'm thinking about doing like a Bricks series, maybe. And I'm gonna be looking for new series too, by the way, for this 2019 add-on. So, if anyone has recommend recommendations for a new series. Uh, and I might be just coming up with these as I read these. Uh, feel free to post comments down below on what type of series you want. If you are a Patreon subscriber, you get priority. And I would probably, if there are Patreon subscribers that are recommending series, probably going to put them at the top of the list. And then we'll probably do some sort of poll overall. I might do two different series, but I got a lot going on right now, so... There's a lot going on at work, and uh, the speech and debate season is full force, so that's going to go on until March, but uh, we could start some new series here, and I'd like to get some polling data from subscribers and Patreons, more specifically, uh, on what people want to see. Well, subscribers and Patreons. FYI, for Patreons, uh, I am down below $10 again a month, so I'm not making a ton of money on this. Uh, when it is down below $10, I think uh, I'm only getting like 63 cents on the dollar or something like that. So FYI, uh, I need another $2 um, for that bump. Uh, otherwise, you know, half your money is almost going right to Patreon and not to me. Um, also, that means that that whole incentive that I had is going to be changed because the incentive was as long as it's $10 a month, I'm going to be doing commercials every 10 minutes or so, which led me to do 30 minute episodes probably going to start doing reducing the episodes down back down to like 25 minutes it seems easier for me to get that done particularly in a week particularly uh you know during the winter where i have i work you know six days a week kind of um so i don't really have time to you know record a lot of videos but anyways this this episode might end up being 30 minutes though because i've been talking a lot here uh but I'm going to add that new incentive to the Patreon, and if it goes back over $10, then we can get it back up to 30 minutes, and every commercial every 10 minutes, which was, I think, uh, something I'd spoken to about Patreon and everything. So that's a that's a distraction there. Let me go back to the, the 2030 stuff. And look at all these... Ooh, Iraq. Look at these countries. That's interesting. You can just jump around to that. I've never done that before. Ah. Ah. This is not 2019, by the way. Um, this is 2018. So, but back to the new features for 2019. Here's a new one. Uh, possibility of a tax on cannabis. And if it's legalized and uh, its economic sector could be open. So that's an interesting thing. I live in, uh, I live in New Jersey. I'm going to give that one away. Uh, and the governor of New Jersey had campaigned on... I can't get the state. Um, legalization of marijuana. So uh, that's something that's been going on throughout the United States. I think we have it in Colorado and a number of other states. New Jersey, they've legalized gambling and they've been taxing it, but the governor wants to legalize marijuana and tax that. Which, in general, would probably create a lot of revenue through taxation and probably also reduce the amount of people in prison too, I would think. So, that's interesting for this game. There's going to be a carbon tax. I thought there already was a carbon tax. I'm wrong about that, I guess. There's no carbon tax. Tax on petroleum products. Uh, I guess, yeah, there's a tax on petroleum products. There's a tax on... Oh, here's a creation. No ta carbon tax. Tax on industrial pollution. That's Isn't that the same thing? What's the difference there? 
Uh, deforestation. So, okay. Uh, the establishment of legal age for alcohol consumption. So I guess that's going to be a law, a social law that you could probably do. Probably going to go in the family, I guess. Um, which you could change that. That kind of reminds me of Democracy 3 where you can adjust that and other different things. There's a couple things here, I think, that were in Democracy 3 that they're adding now to Geopolitical Simulator 4. And I don't know if they, they're making a connection from that or not, but it just seems like a lot of the policies from Democracy 3 are being implemented into some of this new legislation. Uh, I think digital tax was in Democracy 3, or at least in some sort of mod in Democracy 3, too. Uh, we have active defense mode for missile launcher units and destroyers that can automatically bomb enemy units entering a protected zone. I think that's cool because I think one of the things that you know this game suffers in, one of the areas this game sort of suffers in, is the uh, military combat. And so um, it's really chaotic and it's tough to organize in military combat in this game. So with this, or at least to have like autonomous orders given out, you gotta like keep track of everything. Like if you give the autonomous order to have your uh, military attack another country, that military is going to end up going through multiple other countries on the way, and it's going to end up getting involved in a lot of wars. So this is cool. Uh, this defense, active defense mode is kind of cool because it's, it tells me that Everism is starting to look towards managing the uh, better autonomy of the different military units that you have, which I think is good. I think that that's one of the areas that is lacking in this game, so I think we need to kind of improve on that, so I'm glad to see that. Uh, distinguishing missile launcher movements from missile trajectories for all missile launchers. I don't know what that means, but it also sounds like we're working on improving um, combat automation in the game. Uh, management of electric car and self-driving vehicles. That's probably going to go under environment, I would assume. Yeah, we'll see where they put that. A um, lot of lot of environmental stuff in this added into this one. Uh, possible dismantling of infrastructures on the map. I don't know why we would do. That. I guess I could see why we would do that. Uh, closing and reopening of nuclear plants gives you some more control over that. I'm not really done a lot with nuclear plants um, in this game, so. New technologies of self-driving cars, Hyperloop trains at more than a thousand kilometers an hour. Uh, constructible on the map. CO2 capture plants, high density batteries, third generation nuclear power plants, EPRs, I don't know what that stands for. Uh, the addition of progress levels for scientific research. All right, so all that stuff seems pretty cool. Yeah, I think another thing is scientific research is kind of like with this game, you know, it's not really clear about how things go. I don't really engage a lot in scientific research. It's kind of like something that has to sort of happen on its own. I don't know. I've never gotten into scientific research that much in this game. Um, simulation of electricity shortages. So there's some... A lot of desert, it seems to be like disasters are being added and more progressive stuff like environmentalism and uh, social things like women's rights and everything. So that's pretty cool. New displays, which include um, the new displays include, oh, this screen is killing me. All right. New displays include new comparative maps, global warming temperature curves, up to the year 2100, social inequality, malnourished populations, terrorist threats, deaths due to drug use, environmental maps including forested areas, deforestation, uh, organically cultivated areas, maps related to women's rights, salary inequality, and practice of women, a female circumcision. Um, and the game option of whether or not to include actual historical results in calculating election results. There's new achievements and various gameplay adjustments and bug correction. Very good. Thank you for correcting the bugs. Uh, other things that are updated, budgetary and economic social data, political and geopolitical data, new governments, constitutions of new parliaments, diplomatic relations. There's an addition of a second chamber to Brazil, a Senate. Uh, there's more environmental data, military data, terrorist organizations designating high-speed train lines and motorways. And new character faces for a bunch of new leaders there. And it is recommended that with PC you use 
Windows 10, 8, or 7. Yes, I am operating on 7 because I hate 10. I don't know if you guys lost that volume there or not, uh, but I was just reading off the, the map, so hopefully this video turns out well. Um, so, I think it looks cool. I don't see a price, uh, but it's set to release, I think, uh, January 25th. So just let you guys know that that's happening. And, uh, yeah, that's what this episode was dedicated to. So, and I didn't do it for any advertisement reasons. I didn't get paid by Everism to do it. I just felt like since my channel is dedicated mostly to Geopolitical Simulator 4, I should give you guys an update on the add-on or the add -on, or at least dedicate an episode to that. And then in the next episode, we are going to invade Cyprus. So that's for the next episode. So, uh, like I said, as always, uh, you can support me on Patreon, follow me on Twitter, links are down in the description below. Uh, please like the video and subscribe if you would like to see more. Hit the bell icon to get constant updates, and I'm going to try to keep up with weekly geopolitical, or maybe two times a week geopolitical videos. But I also have series going for Hearts of Iron 4, uh, World War One mod playing as Germany, what would Otto von Bismarck do? We've got Realpolitik, Bulgaria, the savior of the Balkans, Patreon request, and we've got Making History, the Great War, another Patreon request, uh, Japanese series. So again, if you are a Patreon, you're on this channel, your uh, requests are prioritized. And you get um, pre-release videos. So like I said, I did a bunch of these over Christmas. You'll get all that stuff at once. So, uh, but I'd like to thank all the patrons uh, that I've had in the past, even the ones that have uh, are no longer supporting me. Thank you for the time that you, or the money that you did dedicate uh, in the period of times when it, when it was uh, financially possible or convenient for you. Uh, any amount is appreciated. And, you know, you guys are always my favorite, even if you're not on Patreon, my, one of my patrons anymore, feel free to email me, ask me any questions you want, as always. Um, so thank you for watching, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video when we attack Cyprus. See you in the next video.